Hey, back when the earth was still cooling and I was still in later adolescence becoming an adult, I ran across a book that was really, really stupid. It was called Winning Through Intimidation. Turned out this guy had uh, set up a sale of some massively expensive real estate and then he got the buyer together with the seller and the two of them went in the john at the restaurant that they're in and decided to do the deal and exclude him. So he decides from now on, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm controlling every conversation. And so he would do all kinds of things to intimidate clients. We'll meet at this airstrip and I'll go rent an airplane that costs a lot of money to rent and I'll come flying in acting as if I own it. And I'm going to do all these little tactics to intimidate you, to get you to do what I want you to do. If he met with people in his office, he would make sure that the window blinds were open behind them so blinding light is in their eyes and he can, you know, conquer them. And, you know, it's like, this is the dumbest thing I have ever, ever seen because it destroys relationships. And so I decided I'm going to do exactly the opposite. And so as a pastor, uh, big church, big staff, I got to have some moments with somebody that are going to be a little bit unpleasant. I, instead of inviting them to my office where they're going to feel intimidated, go to their office because I'm on their home turf. I'm in the place where they're going to feel a little bit safer. If I'm going to meet with somebody who I think is going to explode with anger, then I ask them, can we go out? You pick the restaurant. I do whatever I can to just diffuse the tension in the situation. When it comes to evangelism, I think that we really need to think in those same kinds of terms. You know, where does this person drink coffee in the morning? That's where I want to start just hanging out with them. Or maybe they hang out in the bar and maybe you don't drink alcohol, but you could hang out in the bar and drink a Coke and just build on the friendship. Because so much of what we do is about, you know, come to church. I got a friend that I've been working with my wife and I for three years. And this man politically is the polar opposite to us. Um, his sexual orientation is different than ours, uh, to say the least. He uh, assumed that we would judge him as we got to know. I don't even know how come we became friends because he saw us as these judgmental people. And when he found out that we weren't, I mean, it actually came, he brought up a couple political issues and things that were important to him. And he goes, I believe this. And I go, me too. And he goes, what? You know, you're the evangelist and, 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 and you would side with me over these things. And, so, and it had to do with legislating morality. And I go, yeah, of course, I'm a pastor. I believe that, you know, Jesus can change people's lives. Why would I want the government to have to do that? Well, that kind of brought things down a notch or two. And so we've become really good friends. We're at a point where he brags he's never read the New Testament. He wants to tell me all about Jesus all the time, but it's a Jesus that he got out of the newspaper or off of social media or whatever. And I listen to him. Sometimes I argue with him, but mostly I listen to him. And 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 now he's at the point where he just wants to pray about everything all the time. And God is answering his prayers. It's pretty neat. Really neat. And so I decided I'm going to take a big step of faith here. And some friends of mine and I have started a little Saturday night digi church. It's my main church right now. And it's just a bunch of friends and we hang out. And it's very relaxed. And so I invite this guy to it. He doesn't say a word. He goes silent on me. Now, this is in the midst of him bringing Easter greetings to my wife and I, exalting Jesus as this incredible Savior. He, the things he said about Jesus were way more than I would say about Jesus at Easter time. And so I decided I'm jumping on this sucker and I invite him to come to our Saturday night Digi Church and he just goes dark on me. We're going out to lunch this week, my wife and I and he, but I'll tell you one thing, we're not going to talk about come to the place where you feel unsafe. We're going to stay in a place where he see, feels safe and we're going to continue to watch him grow in Jesus. I think that's kind of good advice for pastors to give to their people.